Buongiorno. We are in Prato at the Cathedral of Prato, just outside of Florence, and we're looking at some mosaics. So join us for a minute or two to listen to my friend Antonia. This is where Fra Filippo comes to Prato. He's born in Florence. He's put into the Carmelite monastery there. And he grows up with the wonderful painting of Balazaccio and the Brancaccio Giorno. And he's also one of the favorite painters of Cosimo Leo de' Medici. Remember, Prato is under the Medici. And here we have the illegitimate son of Cosimo Leo. So he comes with Fra Diamante and he starts painting. And he was also made prior of the Augustinian monastery, convent. And that is where he sees Lucrezia Buffi, this beautiful young nun, uses her as his model for the Virgin Mary, falls madly in love with her, and they left. She goes to live with him in his house in Prato, causing him immense scandal. The Pope Piccolomini Second, finally allows them to announce their vows through persuasion from the Medici as well. Obviously, realizing that the value of these two people has vocation. And what we see is these incredible colors, the way Filippo Lippi chooses people's emotions. Now, what you will notice as you look on some of the dresses and the bishop's mitres and his crozier, there's black. And the color that is actually wax mixed with gold, which has gone black. So those would have been in relief and glowing. Mm. When they were restoring this, it must be getting on to 30 years ago, I was very lucky. I actually went up the scaffolding twice. And I remember saying to one of the restorers, but why has he put up you know, little flowers or, or details that you really can't see from the ground. And she said, because he knew that is the way it should be. And in the ceiling, of course, you have the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you look at the expressions on their faces, these people are calling contemplation because they are the evangelists. They are the ones who are telling us the story of Jesus and his followers. And you know, his hands on their chin, now what do I write? How do I write it? Do I remember this properly, etc.? So underneath, in the first lunette, underneath there, is the birth of St. Stephen. But if you notice, in the middle, there's the nursemaid with the baby, and then there's a black figure, and that, of course, is the devil, who substitutes the baby, takes away Stephen, takes him into the wood, the forest in hopes that he's going to die because obviously the devil knew he was going to be very important in the history of Christianity. But he's looked after by a raven, so the story goes, and then he is found by a woman and she gives him to the bishop, Giuliano. And here on the left, you see Stephen wearing the red robes of a deacon, kissing the bishop's hand because he is going off to start his life. And here he is in the middle, in a house, where you can see that figure there, it looks like a woman chained to a pillar because she was possessed by a devil, a demoniaca. And of course, he, Stephen, blesses her. And if you look carefully, you can see the devil flying off. 
And then he goes to the Synagium there. He's in red. You can always recognize people by the color of their dresses. So he's wearing the dress, red dress of a deacon. And he is preaching. The man in the black hat is Filippo Lippi himself. He's put himself in. And you can see he's listening very, very carefully. There's one on the left up there with his chin in his hand, sort of thinking, hmm, he's trying to get his head around the story. But look at the one in the orange here, talking, they're mocking him. Look at the way that the, the one in orange is pointing to him and saying, <laughs> did you ever hear such nonsense in your life? What an idiot, fancy saying that. Never heard such nonsense in my life. And also the ones up above, there too, there's one who's got this furrowed forehead. He's angry. What is this nonsense? And of course, then, he is taken out into the countryside and he's stoned. He becomes the first martyr. There's the young man holding cloak. There is God up there with the angels. God waiting to take his soul, and of course they have the crown of martyrdom in his hand. Then we get to this wonderful scene. Look at the man's face with the stone. Look at the, 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 the rage, the, 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 the horror of that man's expression. It's just pure hate. The man in the red robe is Piccolomini himself. And then over here on the left, you have, again, Filippo Lippi and Fra Diamante with him. And this, of course, is the funeral of Stephen. And we're in a wonderful Renaissance building. Look at the perspective we're getting in this. Look at the fluted columns. And look at these, obviously the prayers are being said. But look at the way people are contemplating what has happened. There's a calmness, but especially the man in the middle with the blonde hair. You can almost hear him thinking, how could they possibly do that? What madness is this? And then, of course, on the other side, notice the way that we're using geometric shapes here as well. Notice the colors. I've just shown you the copes with the, 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 the velvet and the embroidery. We're seeing here the kind of materials being produced in Prato at that time. And then we move to the other side because we have the story of St. John the Baptist, who is not only a patron saint of Florence, but also he is very important to Prato, because Prato at this time was called part of Florence. So we are in the Cathedral of Prato, and we're looking at a fresco cycle by Fra uh, Filippo Lippi, who was a fantastic Renaissance artist, the teacher of Botticelli. And again, if this looks like Botticelli's Venus, there's a good reason. It was the that was the teacher. incredible perspective. I'm here with my friend Antonia Lanza, who has so many wonderful stories to tell. Thank you. 